I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the big man himself, Big Mo. Cody Momots, Cody, you're back in the UK. Another huge fight. How are you feeling? Huge fight. Biggest fight, I think. Ah, I mean, Shields Marsh was pretty big too, but this is my first pay-per-view, so I'm uh, excited to be back. My home away from home sort of thing, starting 2023. It was nice to have three weeks of not traveling during the holidays, but we're back now, and I'm more than happy to be back. You said a home from home here in the UK. You have been here quite a number of times. You've travelled up, you've been at Liverpool, Manchester, London. Have you picked up any of that UK slang yet? Any, any words? Yes, yes, a little bit. Some probably not the most appropriate for a YouTube <laughs> channel, but what did I learn? What did I learned the other day? I learned uh, gra uh, grafter, which grafter. is like hard working, hard working. A gaff is a house. Uh, I think I've learned a couple more, but I'm picking up the slang slowly. I'm picking up the accent slowly. You know, Liverpool versus London, West London versus North London, Scotland, you know, so I'm picking them up slowly but surely. I'm getting there. You're getting there. You can understand us. That's the, that's the main thing, Cody. Yeah. Um, like I say, you, you're, you're relatively new to the MC in game. Uh, last time I spoke to you was four or five months ago in Liverpool, uh, another Liam Smith fight, and you were sort of like trying to find, not find your feet, but get your, get your rhythm, find your sort of mark in it. Yeah. Have you found your feet? Have you found your rhythm? Are you comfortable in there? 100%. Um, the comfortability was always there, you know, but for me, obviously I'm a, I'm a bit more energetic of an announcer. I like the crowd to be engaged. And I knew that the British fans, I think, would, would acclimate well to it. But I think it would take a couple shows. And I think I've proven it now at that point. I've been a part of amazing crowds in Bournemouth, amazing crowds in London that have really been into it, that I've gotten really engaged in the show. And uh, proof of concept, you know, I obviously I'm young. Uh, I did Shields Marshall when I was 26, then I turned 27, now I'm doing Eubank Smith at 27. So obviously this has all happened pretty quick. Obviously I'm a lot younger, but I think the British fans and the British fans are top tier. I, I mean, listen, I love being American. I love American fans, been to football games, all that type of stuff. British fans, it's a different level. I mean, y'all go crazy for darts. <laughs> I mean, it's, a di it's just a different level here. And I knew it would be, and I, I've loved every second of it. With that being said, you mentioned that you're young, you're relatively new to the game. Um, do you feel any nerves when you're up there then? Obviously, you're speaking to tens of thousands in the arena, and in your mind, you're, you must be looking at the camera and thinking there's millions of people watching this. Is there any nerves, anxiety when you're, you're in that ring announcing these huge, huge fights? So, oddly enough, no. I mean, you know, my what's interesting is my career as a ring announcer is kind of scaled like that of a fighter. Yeah. And, and that's been the most fun, and that's why I've been always been really good friends with fighters. Is in the beginning, I started off doing small local shows in front of like 100 people. Then that scaled. I did some bigger regional shows in front of 500 people, 1,000 people, and then that I got a national job, and then that was a couple thousand people. And then I did Eddie Thor, which was international, which was you know 5,000 people and a million viewers. And then Sky Boxer brought me on, so it scaled every time. But Whenever I was doing the smaller shows, I never imagined that I was there. Yeah. I imagined that I was at Madison Square Garden, that I was at the O2. So I remember, you know, when I got to Shields Marshall, and that's as big, you know, as big of a stage as pretty much you can get, 20K at the O2, millions of viewers worldwide. I just, I felt fine, and I really enjoyed it. And embrace it. Yeah, embrace it, and, and how could you not? Like, I get, my thing is I like watching people have a good time. I like creating an atmosphere, and... So I really just enjoy the job and that allows me to do it and to focus on just doing the job. Obviously, when you look at the, I touched on this last night, we'll, we'll just break down last night. I tried to interview you last night, but my battery ran out. It was a busy day yesterday. But the question I, I was asking was the, the, the USMCs. You've got like obviously the legend of Michael Buffer, the legend of Jimmy Lennon Jr. You've got David Diamante, you've got yourself. Now, all four of you that come to mind straight off the bat, you, you, you the US MCs, we've got great MCs in the UK, don't get me wrong, but there's, there's an energy, there's a gimmick, there's, there's a razzmatazz to the US MCs. You always bring something different, there's always a catchphrase, a gimmick. Did you have to find your gimmick and your catchphrase sort of thing? Did, did it take a long time to find that? Like, I know you say, let's get wild, UK could, hey, fans, can you hear me? And yeah. all this, so did that come naturally or did you take time to, to figure out your sort of, your own sort of niche in the game? 
It took time. I mean, I the catchphrases are important to me, but they're not. Yeah. I mean, in the sense of obviously, I you know, I like the catchphrases that I use, and people can relate to them and stuff like that. But I'm not. I more so focus on the atmosphere that I create versus just the words that I say. You know, if I have to amend one or two words, then okay. You know, it, that's not an issue with me. I'm focusing more on, you know, do I create that atmosphere for people? Do I make sure they have a good time? If I have to use one word versus another, it's not a big deal to me. Yeah, I use my catchphrases and I like them. And I think that's yeah, not exclusive to Americans. I think it's kind of made just a little bit coincidental. Um, but for me, it's more so, you know, do they do they remember who I am? Do they enjoy my style of announcing? The fighters, I know I get a... a, a I get a, along with great, I actually turn and face the fighters in the ring. I know a lot of announcers are kind of static. I like to move around the ring. I like to be engaging with the crowd. I like to look at the fighters in the eye. I have tons of fighters that come to me after the fact and thank me for the introduction and things like that. And Joseph Parker, yesterday, I'm going to announce his actual, his tribal name on Saturday. So people don't know, if you, if you don't know this, he goes by Joseph Parker, yeah, name, but yeah. his real name is Lupe Soliai La Aulia Mailatoa. Well done. And I played with American football with a lot of Polynesians, Tongans, Samoans, so I always knew how to pronounce those names. I learned the Hakka when I was young playing football, so I knew that, and I did it, and he looks at me like this, and he comes up to me and he goes, how'd you know how to do that? Are you doing that on Saturday? I go, yeah. He goes, that was spot on, like blah, blah, blah. That's what I, that's what I want to do. I, whether I say get wild or let's get wild, I mean, sure, that's fine, but I care more about that than anything else. Yeah, that, that, that was very impressive first and foremost, but I think, uh, yeah, something like that with some, like Joseph Parker, his tribal name, that, that would mean a lot to him. So that, that's a very, very special touch. As an American though, as we touched on, um, that Medicine Square Garden, the Vegas, are you, is that sort of like a goal for yours in the near future to be at MSG and announce a big fight, maybe even a big huge Vegas fight? Is that sort of like, not the, not a pinnacle, but is that a sort of dream, a goal for yours coming into 2023, 24 maybe? I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say I have goals. I think goals are important. Um, and what's nice about my job is it's easy to pinpoint a goal. I would say my goals are uh, Madison Square Garden, Vegas, and I mean, Wembley, here, I mean, Tyson Fury's packed 100K in there. Could you imagine? Yeah. Could you imagine me with 100,000 people? I got That's 20. I got 20,000 going crazy at Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields, and I'm gonna do it again on Saturday. You give me 100,000 people, it'll go off the Richter scale, earthquakes, that type of thing. So those are my goals. I want to entertain the most amount of people as possible. You know, I remember someone asked me, you know, what the goal would be, and I remember. Uh, the Rolling Stones and Rod Stewart packed two million people on Cop Copacabana Beach in Brazil in the biggest concert ever. Let's do a fight. Let's see if we can get 200,000, 300,000 people for a fight. Obviously, that would take a massive superstar, but if that ever happens, get me in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you mentioned there, Wembley, but if Liam's, all, all goes well for Liam Smith on Saturday night. Yes. You might get Anfield now. I don't know if you know... Liverpool and the soccer, football is, as we call it over here, how big that is for somebody like Liv uh, Liam Smith to fight at Anfield. So you might, if the, if the stars align, that you might get an Anfield gig. So it's just as big. Well, I mean, so when I did Liverpool, we did the press conference at Anfield, and I, I knew football, mm -hmm. soccer in the it. States, <laughs> don't say it. Um, I knew it a little bit, but I had friends that are huge football fans hitting me up. They're like, you're at Anfield? Like, it's a legendary stadium, and I'm like, learning it as I go type of thing. And so now that I know it, I'm like, yeah, let's, let's get to Anfield. Let's do a fight there. Let's, you know, again, I just, I get a sense of euphoria from watching people have a good time. Like, and that's why I talk to fans during the shows. If you watch, I'll get up out of my seat in an intermission between fights. I'll go to the fans. Hey, you having a good time? Take a picture, that type of thing. That's what I care about. These people are paying money out of their pockets to go enjoy something. If I can do something to affect that, then I, then I leave happy, and I, and I really enjoy watching people smile and cheer and laugh and things like that, and, you know, we're going to do it again at, on Saturday at the AO Arena. Talk to me about the fight then, Chris Eubank Jr. and, and Liam Smith. As, as a young boxing fan myself, and I watch 
I've, I've known the Smith brothers for so long. I used to watch uh, Chris Eubank Sr. as a kid with my dad. So for me, this fight is, is I'm excited for it. I'm absolutely cannot wait for this fight as a, as a boxing fan, as a boxing journalist as well. But for you, how excited are you, uh, how excited are you to announce such a huge fight like this? I'm honored, honored first and foremost. I mean. Number one, what I love about this fight is there's a lot of history in terms of their lineages, which is great. Um, but this fight, <laughs> it goes to show that sometimes pleasing boxing fans isn't always the easiest thing to do. I mean, look, this it's a 50-50 main event. It's a pretty decent undercard, multiple heavyweights. we got title fights. We have up-and-coming superstars. It's not a crazy long card, but it's a deep card, which is awesome. And it's headlined by two of the best in the world in their weight division. I believe that whoever wins has a good argument to possibly get a title shot. Um, and it could go either way. I mean, people have been asking me my picks. I don't know, because I think... It's, I think it's pretty conclusive that Eubank is probably stronger, maybe the better athlete, but Liam's the better boxer. Mm -hmm. So you have that classic stylistic matchup, and it's kind of, you know, who's going to be able to initiate what they want to initiate first, and I, I literally have no idea. I'm, I'm not a betting man. If I was, I wouldn't even bet on this fight. <laughs> I do want to step away from boxing. I know you were an American football Star college football in high not, school. No, not, not a star. No, a star. A, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call me college a star. football. They're all right. Yeah, yeah, college football definitely, definitely better than most. But I wouldn't classify myself as a star. I would ask you this question: Why do you think that Americans call our football soccer, their football football, when you use your foot once in American football and that's to start the game, but football over here we use it's basically a foot and a ball. So, do you have any inkling as to why? You call yours football and ours soccer? I have been thinking about that ever since I made the mistake of calling it soccer and I almost got ran out of the country. Uh, I have no idea. I, I literally have no idea. Americans have a history of copying people here and there, so maybe we just stole it. I have no idea. Um, obviously, your football is significantly older, so I find it strange that we call ours football, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Oh, you know the answer. I do know the answer. Well, I believe I know the answer. Anyway, so our football is association football. So that, asso that association, they got the word soccer from association. I don't know. So that, the association soccer. So they got that from that. So it's association football and they sorted it to soccer. That's what I believe. That's what I got told. The reason why you call it because it used to be association football, you call yours football, so and they shortened it to soccer. That's what I well, heard and that's what I believe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you need to learn something new every day. Come to <laughs> IFL if you want to learn new things. I just learned something. Appreciate that, Andrew. No worries, no worries. <laughs> uh, Cody, what I do like about you, mate, though, going back to the boxing side of things now, is you, you definitely bring a, a, a young, energetic energy to the game. Um, you're, you're, you're obviously, you interact with the fans. You not only interact with the fans in the arena, you're the folk at home uh, you know what I mean which is uh, which is good to see and it's uh, I hope you're uh, you're enjoying it I, as much as the fans are no I love it and, and you just hit the nail on the head I'm the only person that talks to both audiences the commentators only talk to the broadcast I'm able to talk to the broadcast and I'm able to talk to the in arena crowd which is why I have a bit of a an added level of extroversion and you know charisma associated with it because I'm trying to establish authority as a speaker. I'm trying to carry the pace of the show and I'm trying to entertain people. I've talked about this. This is gonna be my calling card for my whole career. But if we're asking people to take time out of their life, if we're asking people to spend money, then you know what? They deserve a show. They deserve to walk away from their TV or to walk out of the arena and go, you know what? That was a damn good time. That being said then, Big Mo, why should people by spend some money on box office to watch this fight. It's a great fight. You mentioned the undercard as well. So why should people spend that money to watch the pay-per-view on Saturday night? Because it's going to be a damn good show. You know what I say is, and boxers is with me on this, and this is why I came with boxers. This is why I came with Sky Sports. We don't want any more boring boxing. A lot of boxing shows can be a little dry. This card is stacked. This card has entertainment value. This card has everything that you as a boxing fan is going to want. Competitive matchups, good showmanship, probably some trash talk, an energetic ring announcer, maybe a, perhaps over the tops at times, <laughs> um, and an amazing atmosphere. So when you put that all together and you have the opportunity to spend your money here or spend your money elsewhere, I don't tell anyone how to spend their money. 
but I know that this is going to be a damn good show. I put my money on that, that this is going to be entertaining. So I hope that all you guys can watch it. I hope that if you have tickets, you have an amazing time. Please come up, talk to me, message me on social media. I love interacting with people. I'll even interact with you during the show. I love doing that. I, I'll message people on social media while I'm ringside and take videos. Again, it's, it's having that association with the fans that I care about because you guys are the consumer of the sport. Big Mo, as always, an absolute pleasure. I know we've got the press conference in a couple hours now, so I know you've got to get ready for that and prepare, so good luck with that. And uh, listen, I'll see you later on this afternoon. Awesome. Well, Andrew, I sincerely appreciate you specifically. You know, you were the first person with IFL to kind of talk to me, and I appreciate that. Um, friend for life in my yeah, opinion yeah, American football fan will watch a game sometime yeah, get yeah. you over to the states thank you to IFL for watching make sure you follow me on social media interact with me talk where can to they find you where can they find you uh, at official dot big mo on Instagram and on TikTok and at big mo underscore official on Twitter um, connect with me I, I love what I do I love entertaining you guys and uh, you're going to see it again on Saturday appreciate it big mo thank you so much brother thank you very much mate thank you I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. Eh? See if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session.